and I've publishing, been publishing some articles on the effects of nuclear radiation and health. And then I just edited this book on Chernobyl, uh, and that was it's published now by the New York Academy of Sciences, which is a good press. And it's the effects now, 24 years later, from uh, the Chernobyl fallout, which hasn't stopped yet. It's still going on. The entire northern hemisphere was impacted by the, the fallout. So we can't just say, well, it happened over there in Russia no, in Ukraine. Don't worry about it. The plants are still operating. And the problem is that there's 104 nuclear power plants operating in the United States. And they operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can't smell, taste or see what's coming out of them. But they emit radioisotopes 24 hours a day. And these fall to the earth, you know, with rain and snow, get on the grass, animals, particularly dairy animals, eat the grass. If they take up the isotopes, particularly like strontium-90, which goes into the, food, into the milk supply. And then mothers who are pregnant, drink milk or eat cheese, and the strontium-90 goes into the bones and teeth of the unborn. So we're seeing an epidemic these days of small birth weight babies in the United States. But then when you talk about Chernobyl, we're seeing small birth weight babies, babies with small um, head circumference, and babies who are not, who are not surviving, or born with, uh, with birth defects and with learning disabilities. So this is a serious problem, and the public needs to understand this, and I don't think the public gets the message. When was the last time you read an article about a nuclear power plant in any of the major newspapers? Not going to see it. So who can get the message out there? Well, we try. It's, I think it's mostly uh, NGOs and small groups that are, that are across the country different anti-nuclear groups who are getting out the information. I think the internet has been useful in doing this because it can bypass the, the big press. What is a reasonable distance to live a, a, away from a power plant if you're looking at something in that area? Well, the studies we did mostly were within, we picked up strontium-90 in children's teeth within 50 miles of a nuclear power plant. but. The city of Washington, D.C. has no dairy herds, to my knowledge. But after Chernobyl, the, the iodine-131 level was very high in the milk supply in Washington, D.C. But where does the milk come from? It comes from eastern Pennsylvania and, northern Mar and northeastern Maryland, which are dairy country. And they're downwind from uh, Three Mile Island, Limerick, and Peach Bottom, nuclear power plants. So it's all well and good not to live near one, but if you're getting your milk and dairy supply from farms that are around them, you, then it, it, we, it, it doesn't help not to be living next to them. So this is a serious problem that people need to know about.